A very good evening to you who is watching UBC TV. My name is Sophia Matovu and you're tuned in to You Health Chat, proudly sponsored by National Medical Stores. Now, mental health is important in every stage of life, right from childhood into adulthood. It's not a stage that we can afford to ignore. Today we're taking a little bit of an unusual turn of our conversation. And uh, with me in studio, we're going to talk about one of those topics, you know. It's a unique topic, I would like to say. It's how the media represents mental health. And I was like, I'm not the other doctors as usual, but this time we have a journalist, some beautiful lady here with me, who is called Claire Nasasira. And how is Claire famous? Claire is a person who is very passionate about discussions and topics of mental health. In fact, she's a journalist and she hosts a social media talk show that is called Black Mental, Matter, Black Mental Health Matters, yeah? Black Mental Health Matters. So it somehow caught my attention and I was like, this is a rare one, this is unique. I would like for her to take us, we're going to have an, a very wonderful chat with her, how we get to find out how the media represents issues on mental health. Claire, a very good evening to you. A uh, very good evening to you, Sophia, and uh, thank you for having me here at UBC TV today. And um, I'm very much delighted to talk about mental health and the media and uh, how we represent everyone out there. Okay. Because we speak for the public, so mm. what we say is what they take. Yes. Yeah. Now, first, you know, Claire, as we have gone in this different field, yeah. People have different bits. They have done everything around, gone around in all the corners. Yeah. How did you end up zeroing in and saying, mental health is a topic for me. Mental health is what I would like to get out and make sure it's my daily writing topics or discussion topics. Wow, that's an interesting <coughs> question. Mm -hmm. As well as my journey is a very interesting one. Uh, because um, I think uh, all of us uh, get mental health issues directly or indirectly mm. and uh, us finding it out is uh, by taking it upon ourselves to know you know um, maybe read or maybe talk to someone maybe someone might tell you, you know what yeah according to what you've told me you should go for maybe some checkup and uh, maybe say I can't say something like that mm. so um when it comes down to my journey I have been uh, a my mental health uh, victim for um, my life has, it's a life, it's a surprising life. I'm actually surprised that I'm living today. So, yeah, I thank God for that. Uh, my life is a surprising life. So, um, I have had uh, mental health challenges in the past. I have been depressed personally. I have, you know, uh, had suicidal attempts. I have, uh, you know, had suicidal thoughts in my mind. And, you know, I, I've actually tried to take my own life at, at a certain point in life because, I, I mean, you think that when you die, things are going to end there. You know, you think when you die, life stops there, but it does not stop because you've left people behind who are going, you know, to, you know, to, to, to feel whatever trouble you pass through after. And maybe also that trouble can also take out their lives at some point. Mm -hmm. So um, I've had uh, personal challenges in life. That's what I can say that drove me into mental health. But um, um, my journey uh, into, you know, starting to focus on mental health was through a friend. A friend that I met on social media and a friend who thought that I could do well in mental health. So uh, she's South African and also Canadian. She invited me to a mental health uh, generation, which I accepted. And um, by joining her to learn more about mental health, and uh, I got interested in it. And uh, the rest is history. Here I am. Mm -hmm. sure. That's quite interesting. We shall dive a little bit about that. Now, there are certain times um, we've represented m mental health in a way like um, in the community, yeah. where we even go ahead to identify people by saying, ah, ah Oyo Mularu. Claire, is that what we do uh, as media? Um, mental health, um, when we talk about, of course, media, since we speak for the public, mm -hmm. we're supposed to be exemplary. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, most times we also act like the ignorant people who do not know about the things that we're talking about. So um, sometimes when, when you go out in the field to cover a mental health story, you might meet, uh, let me say you have gone maybe to the national referral to cover mental health issues. And you meet, you know, when you go there, you meet these people in the compound, maybe they want to buy some sweets at the canteen or what. And maybe if you have a colleague, you'll be like, Eh? You know, they are crazy, they are mad. You have all those kinds of terms, you know, to describe these people. 
But um, until you're in that situation yourself, you will never understand what it means for someone you know, to name tag you based on the situation you're, you're in, you know? When your name, you know, uh, let me give an example of um, when HIV had come back in time. You know, people used to name tag the HIV victims, you know? Mm, mm, mm. They would be like, oh, that person is not supposed to be living with the rest of us because, mm. you know, they have this HIV, you know? People thought by, you know, uh, speaking to me, you know, I want to give the HIV. Mm -hmm, mm. They thought by sitting close to me, you're going to get, get the HIV. HIV. They thought by, uh, you know, um, eating food on a same plate with me, you're going to get HIV. You know, mm. so many stereotypes, so many mm. things were said, so many myths came up, you know? So many junkies, I call them junkies, so a lot of things were said about HIV. And you know, it's, it's actually recently that people have come to understand that HIV is a normal disease, you know? As long as you take your ARVs and, you know, uh, eat good food, you have a healthy nutrition, you can live with HIV until uh, you're 90 years of age, you know? Mm. So the same thing that applies to mental health. But you see, it took really a lot of sensitization, a lot of, you know, um, talking about HIV, turning it upside down for people to really understand what HIV is really about, you know? So the same thing applies to mental health. Until sensitization goes deep, deep and deep and deep and deepest. Mm -hmm. It's not going to, to be any better. People are still going to call themselves crazy. You won't be describing, oh, you see that Claire, she, she's crazy. She doesn't, the things she says are not normal things, you know? Mm. No, I just met her yesterday and she was laughing on her own, you know? Mm. She was talking all these shitty things to herself. She's crazy, she's, she has run mad, you know? Mm. So until a sensitization comes on, because even media personalities, some of them are not well educated when it comes to mental health. They do not know what it entails, you know? Mm. They don't know. You know, when you're doing media, uh, there are so many branches. Some people are doing politics, others are doing uh, security, others mm. are doing uh, health, others are doing uh, environment, lots of, you mm. know, lots of bits in the journalism sector, you know. Mm. So until someone has focused on the mental health aspect, I don't think the stereotypes won't change anytime soon. So sensitization is what needs to be done. Now for you having or being a host of that show on yeah. social media, how do you manage to get about it? How do you dive? Do you look at situations majorly more in Uganda or you also incorporate the international scenario? Let's take Uganda to start with per se. What's your observation and how have you been able to represent? Oh wow, uh, that's a very beautiful question. You know, I love Uganda. It's a landlocked country, but I love it. It's mm -hmm. a, a beautiful country. <laughs> so uh, so uh, Uganda, uh, me, my hosting journey with Black Mental Health Matters, mm. uh, my role was actually to represent Uganda on the world map, the global map, to represent the case scenarios, the mental health case scenarios in our country. Mm. So that, you know, I can showcase what we go through here and compare the notes with the global village and see well, why are we doing it wrong? Where are they doing it right? Or why are they doing it wrong? How can we compare notes and how can we achieve the goal that we're looking at, at you know? Because mm. we have long-term plans, obviously, you know? Mm. So uh, when it comes to Uganda, I think Uganda, like I said before, we are lagging behind, you know? Professionals, non-professionals, we almost are all the same. We are all like, on the same line, we don't understand what mental health really is, you know? Even when you go to hospitals, medical professionals who are not into mental health, they do not actually know about mental health. This is surprising, you know, finding a medical personnel not knowing about mental health. Mm. But it is the reality, they don't know about it. And there's nothing much we can do about it unless we have sensitized them about it, you know? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, so, and what to actually, when we talk about mental health, everyone's going to f point fingers at Dr. Vika. Mm. Referral, referral, national referral, you know? But remember that um, every government referral, every national referral, I mean, I think, yeah, every national referral, mm -hmm. like, in the Malagos, different, different districts, different regions, yeah. they all have a mental health branch on it. But you see, we do not know about it. We don't. We only know about Havika. Yeah, we know, we know. When another show, when you mention about Havika, I'll be like, are you crazy? You know? When you say, uh, I'm going to Havika, you know, to maybe, of course, Havika is a very beautiful hospital. Very clean, very enticing, very charming. You know, it has those... 
Nice very trees. good ambience. Yes, exactly. Mm, mm, mm. So sometimes someone might want to go that just you know take a rest and maybe think things through. But whenever you tell someone, ah, I'm going to Utavika today, even if you're going to neighboring areas, not necessarily the hospital, people will be like, Are you crazy? Are you mad? Are you sick? You know? They live those kinds those kinds of terms. Mm. So uh, as far as Uganda is concerned, I think we are very behind when it comes to sensitization. We, are very, we do not understand what the mental health concept entails. Because, you know, when you talk about physical health, someone is going to be quick to run to uh, a clinic or a pharmacy mm -hmm. or a drug shop to get some pandemic whenever they feel a headache. Mm. But someone will not even take a single step whenever they feel low, whenever they feel that their moods are low. What they is will, the cause? They will not take even a single step. Do you know what they will do? If they have blankets close by, they will, they will cover their heads mm -hmm. and sleep and mm. sleep. Actually, they will try to sleep, though they might not actually get the sleep itself. You mm -hmm. know? So the people do not know that mental health is as important as physical health. And in actual sense, without mental health, you, you have no physical health. Mm -hmm. It all starts with the mind and it flows down to the body. Now, I would like you so. to help us, you as an, who, who is more, it's your beat. Yeah, sure. I'd like you to help us and demystify for the audiences out there. Because, you know, there are myths and misconceptions where they exactly. think, when you talk about mental health, you must be capish, mad, yes. properly, properly mad. And they don't know it has different forms. Yes. It has different types. Even depression alone is a form of mental health. Yeah. Please take us through. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, now, uh, there is... There is uh, mental health. When we talk about depression, you mm. know, I've, I've always had someone say, oh, I'm so depressed. Today mm. has been a stupid day. I feel so depressed. I feel so down. But in actual sense, this person is stressed, mm. not actually depressed, you know? There's a difference between stress and depression. And depression, too. Yes. Depression is a clinical term. Stress, mm. anyone can just get stressed, anyone whatsoever. But the moment you get depressed, means you're sick. Mm -hmm. Depression is actually, when you get stress, and uh, it's more like getting malaria, and you mm. don't go for treatment. And this malaria grows into malaria plus, malaria plus, 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 plus malaria, malaria plus, no, plus, 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 uh, yes, plus, 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 ten <laughs> times plus, you know? And then the people begin saying, oh, I took my daughter to the hospital and she had malaria, plus. she almost died. Oh my God, I almost fainted, you know, that kind of thing, eh? Mm. So something applies to mental health. When you get a stress and not take care of it, no, it and, accumulates. Uh, it accumulates you end up getting depressed. Now you get into a clinical uh, state. state, you know? And depression also has stages. It, you can also get a depression plus, 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 until you cannot rewind it, and you mm. end up dying, you know? Mm, mm, mm. Some people have died of mental health, you know? Mm. So uh, besides the depression and stress, um, there is bipolar disorder. Now, uh, bipolar disorder, uh, mood swings, I will call it in a layman's term, someone has mood swings, you know? Mm. Uh, before I just uh, started my journalism career, I wondered how the mood swings happen, you know? How can someone be happy at some point and uh, in a short while they are, they sad. are sad? How does that happen, you know? Because mm -hmm. when you have bipolar, you, have a depre you, are, you get a depressive state and also you get a maniac state, you know? Mm -hmm. The maniac state is why you're so excited and so happy and you're laughing about things anyhow and all that kind of thing. And then when you're depressed, you're so down, you know? You're so down, you're so, you don't want to talk to anyone, you're gloomy, you know, you're, you're crying, you're sleeping all the time, that kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, that one also is a, is a, is a disorder of, its, uh, of itself and uh, Obviously, people have got to take quite a lot of time to understand it, you know? Because you will, you will ask yourself, how does that happen? Do I just wake up and start smiling? Okay, if I, well, if I start smiling, can't I force the smile to go around and then you get sad, you know? But you mm. can't force something that happens naturally. You're mm. sick, so you just need to go and, you know, get tested and uh, get the medication. Also, uh, there is anxiety. You now talk about uh, being anxious. Some of them, yeah, for, I've always had people say, oh, I feel so anxious today, I feel like, I don't know, I'm so, you know, the word anxiety kind of sounds of like excited, mm -hmm. you know? Talk about anxiety, but I'm like, oh, I feel so ang uh, anxious. anxious today, you know? Is something good going to happen? Mm. My friend, when you're anxious, you should actually go and uh, get checked up, you know? Because there is something that's bothering you, something that you do not know about, you know? Mm. It means that 
there are things that have happened to you in the past, and right now you're trying, you know, to they are trying to to sink in, you know, and trying to synchronize them with your current being. Mm. I know, and trying to when I, when they try to sink in, it means they are triggering you deep within. You're getting triggered, you know, mm. here and there, you're getting triggered, and um, uh, you cannot, you yourself cannot tell what what's happening, you know, but you feel like. Your body is get, it's getting boosted. Your feelings mm. are getting boosted somehow within, but you don't know what is triggering them. So, but for you to find out, you cannot find out by yourself. You just need to go and find a professional. A counselor, you talk to them, and you know, they can help you out. You know, mm. um, they can help you out uh, d deal with that. Mm. Um, uh, there's also... Um, um, uh, me mental health is, actu is actually very wide. It is so broad. It's, it's very, very, very broad. broad. So, um, the actual, so there are so many, many, many mental health issues, including uh, um, uh, the other day I, talk, I talked about uh, menstruation and mental health. You know, um, I usually bring up these topics, topics that are so science that related. Are affecting. They are so science related, mm. but they are affecting us as people, you know. Mm. Talk about menstruation. So someone as menstruation and mental health, are they connected? Now, I was looking at my personal scenario. You know, when I first, you know, uh, got into my periods as a young girl, I was scared. I didn't know how to handle the situation, you know? Mm, mm, mm. So uh, recently, I talked about it on one of my socials. And uh, someone came to my inbox and told me, those topics are very disgusting. You shouldn't talk about them. I was like, really? And, uh, if menstruation is disgusting, it means all humanity is disgusting. Mm. Because we are all products of menstruation, one way or the other. Mm. Was if if your mother wasn't menstruating, how would she have conceived you in the first place? You know? mm -hmm. So yeah, so something like that. And then there is a postnatal and, po and uh, postpartum depression. No, this is a kind of depression that women suffer before and after giving birth. You know, when you, when they get pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, there is that kind of phase they go through eh, where you feel like you don't want to eat, you don't want to talk to anyone, you you know you're laid back. You don't want you know to associate with anyone, you know, that kind of thing. Eh? You just laid back, just want to mind your business, you mm. know. And then uh, after you have given birth, you like, don't like your child. You don't want oh them yes, some women go through you that. You don't want them to breastfeed, mm -hmm, you, know, mm. breast, you know, all those kinds of things. Eh? Mm. Somehow, somewhere, you feel like this child does not belong to you. You wanna give it away to. Somebody you know. else. Yeah, somebody Is else. Is this a child that has maybe go through all this? Yeah, so mm. it's, 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 it's quite an embarrassing moment for women. You know, sometimes some people are just so excited to get, to get um, children. But mm. whenever they come, they're not ready for them. Because mm. mm. they were not prepared mentally to receive these children, you know? Now, from your moving around, yeah. I believe you see a lot of things in your life every day. Yeah, of course. Let's get to a work scenario. Mm -hmm. What are some of those things you've seen in the environment as a journalist? Wow. In this, our workspaces. This person has made me so excited, and I'm very happy to hear, to hear it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because when you move to the field, eh, mm -hmm. sometimes you just get excited. Mm -hmm. Just look at people you like. You know, you're trying to explain something to someone, and you know, someone shows you they're not interested in it at all, you know? Mm -hmm. Like people are not necessarily interested in mental health. They are not, you know? Uh, because I've been, uh, you know, hosting uh, Black Mental Health Matters shows, mm. sometimes I invite my friends to watch the show, but they always, the feedback is they are boring. Mm. Yeah, they tell me they are boring shows. Do you know why? Because they are used to music, they want to dance around, mm. you know, they want to watch mm. movies, they want to, you know, Entertainment has taken over, you know. People are not really interested in uh, in things that before them, before they are uh, that their well-being, you know. They're interested in things that are way beyond what the, what they want in life, you know. So people people do not want to know much about mental health. Like, so someone wonders, how do I spend? Because Black Mental Health Matters is usually a one-hour show. So uh, someone wonders, how do I spend sixty full minutes? Listening. Listening to depression. Listening to anxiety. Listening to menstruation. How? You mm, know? Mm, mm. It's, it's, it's some, someone finds it so boring, you know? Mm. So I'm like, if you find it so boring, so how will you take care of yourself? Because mental health is the real deal now. People mm. are dying. People are getting suicidal. Mm? 
Which categories or which age bracket have you seen that's being affected most as a journalist? As a journalist, I think uh, women are being affect, are affected most. Why? Um, I think women, we are too shy and too reserved. You know, too shy and too reserved. And uh, we feel like by opening up about certain issues, we feel like judgment. Of course, there is judgment mm, around. The fear of being judged. Mm, yes, you feel like being judged. For example, I'm here talking to you now. I wonder if I left UBC and I got out there and I told people, you know, I'm feeling so depressed. They'd be like, oh, that girl who was on UBC TV, she's now confessing to depression. Oh, she... You know, that kind of thing, you know. Mm, mm, mm. You know, I, I, it's, as if it is today, uh, I was reading about someone who posted about Jackie Chan. Do you know Jackie Chan, the artist? Yes, I do. Uh, yeah, someone posted about how she got depressed, how she had, you know, issues of mental health. And um, she wa like, people, instead of supporting her, they were throwing judgment at her, you know, mm -hmm. because she had been in the limelight. Mm -hmm. So apparently she's not allowed to get sick. She's not allowed, you know, to tell her story. The stigma she, the around stig it. Yeah, exactly, the stigma, stigma, yeah. So our uh, women are very much affected, and the, and, uh, the women who are affected are between the age brackets of um, um, 12, between 12 and 25, mm, mm, mm. the age bracket. Those young girls. Yeah, yeah, like you're developing your breasts, you're, you know, getting to puberty stage. The body stage, changes. Yeah, kind of things, you know. Like we get affected, and also the other age bracket. I mean, the other uh, group of people gets affected mostly. I would say men, in totality, hmm. men are getting affected. Why? Because men have lived in a stereotype where they're not allowed to cry, they're not allowed to open up, they're not allowed, you know, to to put the emotions out there. They are not allowed to be themselves. In short, you know. Men have grown up with this kind of thing, they are providers. Mm, mm, mm. By creation, men are providers. Men are, you know, uh, they're supposed to be uh, the, strongest, uh, the strongest people alive, you know, mm, kind of mm. thing. So they feel like by opening up about a mental health uh, breakdown, they feel like they are now, you know, uh, coming down to the, to the female's level, you know. Oh. Okay. So it's yeah. So it's kind of hard for them to open up. Even when you meet, when you meet a man, and actually, I want to meet, like let me say, a man who's uh, between uh, eighteen years and uh, thirty. Those ones very hard for them to actually between fifteen years and thirty. Hmm. Very hard for them to open up because that is the, this is the age where they are trying you know to figure out themselves, who are trying to get the outside world, you know. So at this point, this man believes they have everything figured out. At this point, they believe like the entire world is theirs. They feel like, yeah, I'm a man. No, you even meet this boy of 18 years. It's going to, I'm a man. Mm. You're like, really? You know, that kind mm. of thing. So now they have this kind of, of thing in them that I'm a man, I'm supposed to be strong, I'm supposed to, you know, provide. provide. I'm supposed to be the one who comforts everyone. It means. I'm unable to share my emotions. When I cry, then who is going to tap my shoulder? I'm the strongest. Mm -hmm. So if I cry, will a weaker person come to comfort me? You no. Know, that's a question. So that's what it is. So they're still stuck in that stereotype. Yes, that's wow, that. Wow, and wow, so wow. Only sensitization is going to deal with this. But you see, sensitization cannot be done. When it comes to mental health in Uganda, the people who are trying to do sensitization are actually taking money from their pockets. Say that again? Yeah, they're paying money from their pockets. Mm. They are. <laughs> Because why am I saying this? Because you know, uh, when it comes to funding, I'm sure you've already seen the budget. Whatever is given to the Ministry of Health, only one percent is taken to into mental health activities. Let me say, if uh, the Ministry of Health has been given one thousand shillings, Ugandan shillings, for its budget, they will only give ten shillings to mental health. Uh -huh. So what will ten shillings do? If you look at the condition in the country, mm. you know, if you look at recent, since the schools were opened uh, back in January 2022, I'm sure you've had so many suicidal stories of you know, students, children, pupils at schools, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah, they commit suicide because they have been, you know, uh, schools have been changed. For example, my parents say, I cannot afford a Marcos school fees, so you need to go and study from some village school, you know. And someone is like, I cannot go there, I want to commit suicide. Why? Because my friends are here, why should I go to a village school my friends are here, you know? Mm -mm. Uh, and uh, another one is going to be like, ah, at school they used to cook nice food. But now because of COVID, you know, um, prices increased, schools cannot afford, cannot charge you 
a lot of school fees to continue maintaining the children the way they are maintaining them before. Mm. Someone says, I'm not going to be eating posho anymore. Why should I? They hang themselves. Mm. Someone says, I'm not sleeping in this dormitory. They, you know, that kind of thing, you know? Mm. Kids are committing suicide at a higher rate, you know? The, the other day, someone, some kid burnt their fellow kid in a dormitory. They had them oh, on a bed yes. and burnt them. So Bullying other so things, yes, I did. That one, it does not just happen there and then. It means the son of the child has been growing up in uh, that kid's child. mind. Uh, parents have a bigger role to play, you know? Mm. Parents, you know, when COVID happened, parents were so very much sad that kids were sent back to them at home, you know? For those two years, they were like, oh my God, when are schools opening, these kids should go back to school. Mm. Because they had forgotten about their parenting roles and, you know, render the parenting uh, roles to the schools. You know, uh. of which schools, because I have been in a boarding school before, and uh, being in a boarding school, they will not teach you so many things. They will only teach you classwork, physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, geography, history, all those things. But they will not teach you how to live your life. Uh -uh. They will not teach you how to self-care. They will not teach you mental health, you know. They will not teach you those. They will not. Uh. So, uh, whereas a parent thinks that school is the best uh, place for their children, I think they should focus so much on their children more than they focus on sending on, show, on doing shopping for them to take them to school. <laughs> 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 okay, at this particular point, I'd like us to take a very short break. And when we do come back, we're still going to continue into this conversation with Claire. Okay. Are you tired of high fees and slow transfer time when sending money? Look no further. Airtel Money is here to revolutionize the way you move your money. We have revised our rates and now sending money from Airtel to other networks in Uganda, East Africa and to the rest of the world has never been more affordable. Plus, you can trust Airtel Money to get your money where it needs to go quickly and safely. Simply dial star 185 hash and start sending money. Switch to Airtel Money today and the Experience unbeatable rates and top notch services for all your local and international money transfer needs. Airtel Money, instant, secure, borderless. This isn't just a girl, she is the future. This is a teacher, a doctor, a community leader, our future president. She is the future of Uganda, and as a policymaker, the policies I enact today will protect her from child marriage and teenage pregnancy. We each have a role to play in empowering our teenage girls to protect them from child marriage and teenage pregnancy. Because when we empower them, we empower our nation. Protect the girl, save the nation. Take action. Report any case of defilement or child marriage to the police or call Sawuti 116. Jerry, 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 call! Jerry, 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 call! Hey, Master Blaster! Touch him, Anna! Buy Jerry can with muscle! Those ones who say go crazy for doing only! Mudawa! Mudawa! What school fees I teach you? But I'm going to go with the muscle Because of the cover that is very far. Is you serious? Is he serious, you? Ah, what can I watch? Yeah, you stay put on it. Add kilometers to your legs and you get your sugar. We buy meat from Umaru and Umaru refuse to give you enough meat. Mama! Show him that the don't joke with you. Umaru, Oh, kaka ruka no kurunji. Kwe taga ko mtu waku yamba ko. No wecho. Tuja kote la wembele sanide. Osoburo kukore chisinga. Awamu. Tere chiturema.
You're still watching You Health Chat, proudly sponsored by National Medical Stores. And like I say today, our topic of discussion is how the media represents mental health. And there's none other than one of the persons who's taken on mental health as one of her bits, and she does a lot of reporting on it, and that is Claire Nasasira. Claire, as we still continue with our discussion, I'd like you to, to just share very briefly what are some of the quick signs we should look out for. You know, because I think based on the different conditions, they'll manifest differently. But what are the quick signs we look for? Because there are certain times people think it cannot happen to them. Some of these signs might be living with us, and we don't actually realize that it is snapping. It's around the corner. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, for you to uh, figure out that someone is actually uh, having a mental health condition, you need to understand who the, if they are your family members, you need to, uh, first of all, understand how they have been living their lives. If someone is a happy person, uh, preferably like me, if someone is very happy like me, <laughs> and all of a sudden I get more moody, you know, mm -hmm. I no longer talk to people, I like sleeping a lot, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. So someone should question themselves, why is she acting like this? Mm -hmm. Or also the eating disorders. Oh, yes, if yes, I yes. if I change the way I used to eat, for example, you know, girls like eating small small portions of food, you know. Mm, mm. So if I, because that's also an eating disorder, this mm. thing of eating small portions every time you're eating, every time you're eating, because you don't get satisfied, you know. Because you're trying to keep your figure, then you eat today, you eat at at one, you eat something very tiny, then at two, you eat something very tiny, then at three, you know, that kind of thing. You're always in the saucepan looking out for something very tiny. Mm. It means you're sick as well. You are supposed to be getting a portion of food, portion. Mm. which is enough for you, not too much, not too little. So that's enough for you. Put on a plate, sit down, have it, get satisfied, move on, you know? Mm -mm. So, but if you're eating this kind of thing, like you're eating heaps of food, all of a sudden you're beginning to eat and eat and eat and eat, they'll be like, oh, yeah. What's wrong with that? You know, someone should get concerned, someone, if, if they're close to you, mm -hmm. they know your habits. They, sh they should get concerned and ask you what's going on, you know? Mm. And also, uh, there are addictions. If someone get, starts getting addicted, we talk about addictions, do not actually only refer to drug addictions and alcohol addictions. There is quite a lot of addictions mm. beyond the alcohol and the marijuana. There's quite a lot of addiction. There is phone addiction, there is internet addiction, there is pornography addiction. Not people addicted to pornography. Someone's going to buy a uh, an Airtel data bundle or an MGN data bundle or whichever network they are using for a month just to watch pornography, you know? For them on porn sites, some person cannot feel comfortable unless they have watched pornography, you know? So um, if someone, and who knows, someone is, is, is addicted, they, they like having their space. You know, mm. if they have been, you know, uh, wanting to join on with in family gatherings, you know, contribute, at this point they want to you know, try the way because addictions are not something good. Mm. So they want to go and, you know, um, take on their cigarette or go on with their phone or laptop, connect their internet and, you know, watch these pornographic videos, you know. Or maybe they will want to go and, uh, and uh, drink. I talk ab talking about the drink. Yesterday I happened to be somewhere, seated at a... Um, some hardware store. So this guy comes, uh, he was I think around 20 years of age, 20, 20 and 25. So he comes, it was about uh, 4 p.m. This guy is drunk and he's holding some bolts in his hands in a white cavera. I don't know, because the person whom I was with thought they did not belong to him. He was holding bolts, he wanted to sell them. So they can get some more money to go and drink further. Drink further. <laughs> and quench his thirst. <laughs> yeah, Be better placed. Better put out. <laughs> so yeah. he actually wanted to go and quench his thirst mm. further, you know? So, so he, he comes with the bolts, he gets the hardware, and he's like, Do you guys purchase these things? So uh, the person was in the hardware said, No, we have those things in plenty. We cannot purchase them now. So as the guy left, you know, he was like, So. He felt so down, eh? Mm, mm, he felt mm. so down. He felt embarrassed at some point because they couldn't buy his boat. I think I think he had moved with them a long distance, trying to sell them, and they hadn't been bought. So he, as he got out, I saw, I continued looking at him. Because he was smelling alcohol and he was young, so I was like, kind of interested. So I looked at him as he walked out. When he reached the door, he shook his head, he's like, hmm, they like this. 
So I, I looked at him and I, then I told this uh, attendant, this hardware attendant, I'm like, that's how he reacted, just said, mm -hmm, and shook his head, you know? Mm. Because he had been disappointed. I hadn't bought his bolts. I think he knew from here, I want to run back and quench my thirst. Mm. And <laughs> something like that, you know, some, you know, that kind of thing. Eh? Mm -hmm. So you see, addictions can make you do so many things. And first of all, addictions can make you steal. Yeah, true. If you're unable to provide what mm. you want by yourself, mm -hmm. like you are, if you want alcohol, you know, uh, also these uh, narcotic drugs are expensive. You live alone, there's uh, marijuana in the same Kampala streets. There are those drugs that people get addicted to and they cost as much as twen 2 million shillings. Mm. 2 million, 10 million, depending on how much you have in your pocket. You cannot know how expensive something is until you're interested in it. Mm -hmm. So when that point comes of you uh, gathering your interest in something, that's when you get to know how price it can be. No, but if you're not taking something like that, mm. you, will, you will think marijuana, uh, these green leaves, they sell the Kampala streets of 500, 1,000. Mm. No, those ones can be bought by anyone, you know? Mm -hmm. But there are these expensive ones, why you just want to sniff like a dog, eh? Just <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're knocked out. <laughs> and you're knocked out. Yeah. I don't know, surprisingly, people say they have peace whenever they, they, they do that. They say, when I, when, I, when, I, you know, when I smoke those things, Oh, when I sniff in, I feel at peace. I feel so good. Mm. I heard people say, uh, some musicians use drugs so they can be able to go on stage and sing to a bigger crowd. They, they claim it helps them to get rid of stage fright. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But does it? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe their minds. You know when you get used to somebody, something and yes. it clocks into your mind, yes. it no. becomes your comfort space, your comfort small world. Yes. And for you, you believe it is working. Yes. yes. Now, how do you manage? How should people manage? Uh, managing mental health I illnesses, I first of all, you just need to understand yourself. You need to first understand yourself. Your understanding yourself means understanding your body type, uh, habits, preferences, um, all those things, all those things that you call minor things, eh? Mm -hmm. Things that you like, your uh, hobbies, for example. Uh, you need to um, know uh, what do I like eating the most? What's my favorite food, you know? You need to know what is my favorite hangout place? What is my favorite dress? What is my favorite TV channel, you know? Mm. Then you need to get to know what the favorite things are for you. That we are now getting, into, we are talking about self-care mm -hmm. and management and mental health. I want to get to know what fits you best. It means you're going to prioritize it in your life. You oh, know? Yes. It means you're going to imply it, you're going to apply it mm. whenever, wherever, you know? It means uh, if I like UBC TV, uh, your health chart, I want it starts like this. That's I am then there with my remote. I have to be there with my remote because it gives me peace, you know. Mm. When I sit and I and I know uh, I watch Madame Sophia re, uh, presenting, I be like, wow, no, I like that woman, so I have to watch her every Thursday, you know. Mm. If you like uh, taking a Coca Cola, go buy it, sip it, you feel at peace. If you like taking a walk, go take a walk. You know, the other thing, a friend of mine, uh, he was saying he was uh, he had a. Uh, uh, stress issues and you know uh, depression those things you know so i told him do you know what you should do learn your learn yourself get to know what you like get to know what you don't like get to know the people you you, you like being around mm -hmm. get to know the activities you like you know doing you know personally i love soccer but let me tell you my journey of soccer um my soccer journey began when i actually started battling mental health issues as a person I didn't know how to handle them. Hmm. So, so I became an escape. I'm a Manchester United supporter. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So, so I became my hideout. Eh? Hmm. So, whenever it was a weekend and there is so I'd be like, wow, man, is playing. So, I would run eh, mm -hmm. to go and watch my new play. So, I'd sit in front of a TV. I watch my new playing. Whether we lose or we win, I would just um. enjoy the match. <laughs> <laughs> How did you survive not <laughs> getting mad that you have lost? <laughs> no, like for me, yeah. I just enjoy the match, not the goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people might not might think that I'm not getting real with myself, but the mm. fact is, I just enjoyed the match. I enjoyed the way the ball was, you know, moving from one person to the other. People are running around, people are falling down, are standing up. Yeah, those thing, kind of mm -hmm. things. Eh? I just enjoy that kind of drama. 
So for me, it just gave me peace of mind. Because I discovered soccer before. You know, it's for rare for girls to be into soccer. Mm -hmm. But for me, soccer was my high doubt. Though right now, I, it's not a high doubt, it's actually a hobby. Right now, I do so. I love soccer as a hobby. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to be playing for some team sometime to come. Just watch out for me. <laughs> I'll, be a, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be a goalkeeper. Just watch out for me. Okay. I'll, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you have to figure out the things that you, that you like and, yeah. and you apply them in your life. Because they, 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 when you apply them, there is a way they comfort you. There is a way you feel at peace doing these things all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. If you love taking a walk, go take a walk. Walk, put earphones in your ears, listen to music, and, you know, take a very long walk. Or go for a run, or go for a swim. Just do, if you want your space, out, like, out of the crowds, go sit alone somewhere, uh, think. And, you know, try, you know, to figure out yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just have... Uh, the biggest part of uh, management is knowing yourself. Everything else falls in place after knowing who you are. Then, Claire, how do they manage? Okay, in terms of management, how do they manage when somebody starts getting to the point of getting suicidal tendencies? Wow. Um, but I, like I told you earlier on, I have been suicidal before. So, uh, managing suicidal tendencies, um, this all zeroes down to you, like I told you. It all zeroes down to you. Before you get that knife to chop off your neck, think about uh, what you love the most, the part you love the most in your life. It might be your mom, it might be your dad, your brother, your sister, your husband, your boyfriend, anyone. Think about the person that you love the most, you know? Think about your achievements in life. What have you achieved? Achievements, you, you, you do not necessarily have to be a president or to hold a PhD or something. But small, small things can be achievements, for example. Mm. For example, like, uh, if you have been waking up at 9 a.m. every day and uh, suddenly you wake up at 7 a.m., that's an achievement, mm -hmm. you know? You have made it. Mm -hmm. You have woken up earlier than the usual time, you know? Because if, if you wake up at 7 a.m., it means there is much you're going to do between the two hours, mm -hmm. 7 to 9, which you have not been able to do before. before. You know? Yes. Sure. Uh -huh. uh, if you have been uh, at work, if you have been, uh, you know, uh, not delivering to what you wanted to deliver at, and this time around, you know, you, you are, you know, getting, you are, you are getting something, someone is saying, oh, Claire, some nice work. You know, they are complimenting you. Mm -hmm. Even when you think you have not done your best, but someone has complimented you. You know, that is something that should, you know, uh, positively Keep impact you. you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, if, um, uh, let me say, if you have not been cooking food at home, you've been eating at restaurants, and today you are able to fry, it, fry an egg for yourself, or maybe boil some water. <laughs> 40. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is something good for you. You know, you've been able to take care of yourself, you know. Mm. Uh, if you've been, uh, for example, addict, you have, if you've been an addict, and at this point of uh, you want to take your life, you, 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 you think, okay, I've been over drinking alcohol. What if I stopped for two days? How, how, how would it be? And you dared it and you stopped it. That's a very big achievement. Do you know what it means? Take two days without doing the thing you've been doing on a daily basis, on a routinely basis, you know. Something mm. that has been timetabled in your life. Mm. Yeah, so I, I think self-appreciation mm. is what is something that someone should uh, get embedded within their lives so mm. that they are able you know, to get away with all these mental health, suicidal thoughts, things. Yeah. Wow, that's a very good one. Well, um, it's just like about seven minutes to the top of the hour. I guess um, we need to leave the space soon for Michael Jordan Lokoma, who will be coming in at 10 o'clock with the 10 o'clock news. But Claire has said and summed it up. She has quite a lot of knowledge and information. And I would say you're representing us, the media, very well when it comes on matters of mental wow. health. <laughs> because, one is you have seen i think what's making her excel in this field it is something she's gone through herself but not to the point of it clicking off and she had to go into botavica no she's never been admitted in botavica that mm, much we we'll say never. because she learned how to self-care and manage herself and as young people out there i think in due course maybe when we will always find ways of getting you to her i think she'll be a very good person to sit down with and you share your depression issues or whatever it is there Please find out taking care of yourselves. Don't let it tip off to a point of you having to be on medication. Because if you have to be on medication for mental health, I believe it is medication for a lifetime. You cannot stop it. Sure. That is all we had time for tonight. Keep watching UBC TV. Good night from me and Claire.
good night mm -hmm. Inspiring Uganda.